Welcome to Outtakes. I'm Lori Baker. Today I'm talking with actress and life coach Sonia Satra. Daytime fans will remember her as Lucy Cooper from Guiding Light and Barbara Graham from One Life to Live. And now streaming on Amazon.com, you can see her portray the iconic Gloria Steinem in American Playboy, The Hugh Hefner Story. We're talking to her about that as well as her physical fitness company, Modesize. Here she is. So congratulations. Uh, with your role as Gloria Steinem in American Playboy, the Hugh Hefner story, which is streaming on Amazon.com. Uh, yes, how did you get involved you. with this series? My husband produced the series. And so, however, one mm-hmm. would think that just is a shoe in and it's not. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I just, when I heard about the series and, and I heard, you know, I was just like, hmm, what's in there that I might be able to audition for? And when I saw some of the pictures of the people that they were casting, I, we, you know, we both kind of looked at the Gloria Steinem back in the 70s and we were like, I could do that. Like, I actually kind of look like her. <laughs> and so I was just like, please, can I put myself in the hat for that? And so we did some photos just to see, like, the look alike. And that's the one that you may have seen posted. And uh, and then, you know, I, I read and and it was a good fit. So I was able to make it happen. So um, I heard about it, obviously, because he was doing it, but it was a bit of a process even to make it happen. <laughs> but it's quite an honor. I mean, Gloria Steinem, my goodness, she's such an icon. So it was exciting and a little scary all at the same time. <laughs> One huge uh, part of her career was going undercover as the Playboy Bunny uh, to write an expose about Hugh Hefner and Playboy. Is that, like, covered in the film? Is that something, that a scene that you do, or...? I don't actually do that scene. This is a scene, it's addressed in the film, but that's not the scene. This is actually years later. She's um, writing an article, and I think Hugh Hefner at this time thinks, okay, maybe this is sort of water under the bridge. This is going to be the interview that gets them back on the same footing. Maybe they can find some common ground, and um, and that doesn't happen at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite ruthless and he just digs himself deeper and deeper into a hole so it ends up being oh, a rather scathing article and definitely did not um succeed at what he thought it would uh-huh. he was you know he fancies himself as um someone who fights for the underdogs. I think that was one of the surprising lessons that I I had learned about him was, you know, he was very much about black rights. He and Martin Luther King were good friends, and he and his bunnies and group would go to all of these black sit-ins and black rallies and, and whatnot. And in many ways, he thought the way he viewed it was he was doing something similar for women. He was just like them giving them their ability to express themselves, to not have to hide and not have to be quiet and, and to be able to show their bodies and their sexuality. And like, this is their power. And uh, so when they first started protesting at the gates, he was actually really surprised. He was just like, why are they doing this, you know? And so, and of course, you know, one could say that this is sort of a double standard there, like, all right, well, we're making them nude and making them, you know, objectified. On the other hand, in many ways, he thought that this was sort of empowering to them. So a little weird, but um, that's where he really came from initially. Well, that's interesting to see it from his perspective that way, which, you know, so opposite, I think. <laughs> From what everybody does think, yeah. So, you know, how did you prepare to play Gloria Steinem? Did you, like, have to watch a lot of her interviews, or how did you get to her again? I think that was with the, the bulk of what I did. I mean, I read a lot of what she wrote. I had already read a number of things that she had written, some of her books and whatnot, but I watched a lot of the videos just to see her her mannerisms and how she spoke, and particularly in that era, because she, she's, um, I don't know what the right word is, maybe loosened up a little bit. <laughs> she was very, like, stern in her younger days, mm-hmm. didn't express, you know, not a lot of expressions, not a lot of smiles, not a lot of movement, just very like 
but incredibly articulate and uh, smart and quick. Um, so, yeah, so I, that was what I did. And, and just to, to try to get find a little bit of her rhythm and her tone. But, um, yeah, that was, that was the majority. Thank God for the Internet and YouTube. <laughs> what did you like the most about playing the character? Well, I mean, I think probably at heart there is a feminist inside me. You know, I, I believe mm-hmm. in equality for all. I, I that's across the board. I am a, a fierce supporter of all of that, and so I think being able to step into the shoes to somebody who really paved the way for, or, or was a. I shouldn't say paved the way. There are many women who have paved the way, but she clearly was one of them who sort of paved the way for women to become even more equal in a world. That, that was a pretty amazing experience. That's, that's, that was a really neat part to sort of um, tap that, that activist side, that person that's like, I, me, I believe in this so much, I'm ready to spend my entire life fighting for it. It takes that takes a lot. I, I'm familiar with your career, you know, from a Guiding Light and One Life to Live, and your work as an actress. But you've also uh, you're also known now as a life coach, a fitness instructor, mm-hmm. and a motivational speaker. Uh, what led you to go down this particular career path? You know, I think it's all been sort of a journey and work in progress to get to this point as an actor you get rejected a lot and so very early on I realized the importance of mindset and and how powerful that can be it wasn't always the best actor who got the job it was the person who was able to persevere believe in themselves and keep putting themselves out there despite the no's um, that tended to to win and succeed in the end and so I, I got that and so I started studying that at the very beginning when I started studying acting when I started to pursue it in my early 20s um and and I was a big you know Tony Robbins fan and I studied heart math and hypnosis in the forum and anything I could listen to and all those hours of driving in LA I was always listening to those kind of uh, those, those positive mindset tapes and learning tools to help. And so, and I had a life coach before I ever, you know, few people even knew what a life coach was. So I was a big believer in it. And when I was pregnant, I thought I wasn't really working that much. And I thought maybe I'll just get certified as a life coach just for fun. <laughs> and so I started to coach people. I, I studied it so much. I knew it. And, um, and then I was certified. So I did that. And then I learned speaking was a profession. And I've always been into the mind and the body connection. And so I started these women's empowerment adventures, which I still do. And so it's a workshop, and then we go on an adventure. And then from there came Modicize, which was the whole integration of the whole mindset process, visualization, affirmations, goal setting, all of that while you're doing exercise. So it's super efficient. You get to exercise and get your mindset um, very specifically targeted towards what you want to do. And when I was researching it, I, I learned that when you exercise, your brain actually releases this protein. It's called like the miracle grow for the brain. And it's an optimal time to create and to focus and to learn. And so it's really taking that optimal time and that power to create the life that you really want. And that's modicized. Well, have you had any uh, really like uh, moving success stories from someone who's uh, gone to your gone to your workshops or taken your classes? Anything that especially you feel proud of? Uh, yeah, there was definitely there was a woman who um, sadly had lost her her daughter um, about six years prior, and. Um, she was in the class doing something and visualizing something. And when she finished it, she was just like in tears. She was like, I realized that 
I I can move on. I'm not leaving her behind by me moving on. That was sort of what she saw her daughter almost, you know, saying, go, I'm here with you, all I know. And she's like, I've been in 10 years of therapy and I never, you know, and I never got to this point, but this class, this process and that, and the whole combining that happened to come in a boxing move. And so she was just, there was something about the visualization combined with the boxing that just unleashed this whole powerful thing. And it's amazing. Yeah. She's now she's publishing a book and she's um, going out and speaking herself and she's just an amazing person. And it really opened up um, sort of permission for her to move on. So that was incredibly powerful. I also had another woman who lost 30 pounds while she was doing this, and it, and she hated exercise. And one of the reasons why she loved doing this was because she wasn't thinking about exercise. She was thinking about things that she really loved. Um, and so she, um, you know, and, and she really got focused on what she wanted to achieve and other things in her life where she shifted her, you know, she got out of sort of, emotional eating and into really pursuing something that was more meaningful to her. So actually she, she just, she had moved, but she wrote to me and she's just like, I'm still losing weight. I'm still doing great. So (laughs) that was really fun. Um, And I also had a guy who was in the midst of selling his company um, and he did a whole thing around, you know, was in, in the class doing this. And one of the things that came up for him Um, was a strategy of how to handle the kind of final meeting with the people that he was selling to. And he used that strategy and ended up selling for a lot of money. So um, it has been incredibly powerful across the board. I'm a huge believer of we all have the answers within us, and it's a matter of just um, unleashing them, letting them come out, um, tapping them, listening. And the combination of the exercise with the questions and the visualizations really um, gives you an opportunity to do that. Well, you know, since you were telling us that uh, that the rejection of being an actor, all the rejections you have along the way is sort of what led you down this path, uh, to, to be a life coach and to do moda size, do you find a lot of actors uh, taking your class or taking your workshops to help them with their careers? You know, it's funny. I haven't actually targeted it towards actors, um, and I probably mm-hmm. should. I um, created it in a studio of your New York, Ripley Greer Studios, where they do a lot of auditioning, a lot of dance stuff, a lot of things and so I'm always there or kind of around actors and I, I I don't know why I haven't necessarily gone down that route because I think it would be really, really helpful. Um I've gone into businesses and I've um gone into women's groups and so I've tended to be more in those um organizations. I haven't necessarily gone down the actor route, but I think I wish I had it when I was an actor because it would have been huge. In fact, I often say I did do Modicize before I knew what it was. There was one point when I was kind of things weren't going as well, and I used to I was like I gotta snap myself out of it. And so there was this this uh, canyon in Santa Monica that I used to run up, and at the top there was a bridge, and there was if you yelled things would echo back because it was like there was a canyon at the boat the thing. So I would run up there doing all these affirmations and what can I do? How can I make this better? How can I you know improve? Blah 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 and all these things. And then I get to the top and I would yell out what I want. So I'd be like, you got the job. And then I'd hear it echo back, you got the job. (laughs) And I'd I'd cheer (laughs) and I'd jump up and down. And and as a matter of fact, it was on one of those trips down that hill where I got the call to come and do One Life to Live. So it was – it's a really powerful way of integrating your mind and your body and your emotions. And when you get those three in conjunction, you know, it, anything can happen. I really believe that. As a successful actress yourself, what advice would you give uh, for people who are aspiring to become actors? Don't give up. <laughs> Work on yeah. your mindset. Don't give up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really, <laughs> really believe that because I think that the – 
keep the mindset, keep the vision, um, keep working at your craft because, you know, you do want to be good at what you do because eventually you're going to get the call where you're going to have the opportunity. And if you, you kind of set yourself up mentally and you set yourself up with the skills, um, you know, the rest will come together. But it's it's slightly arbitrary. You know, I see that often, too, with my husband, you know, in casting. And it's just like, some, it's that thing everybody talks about. You know, you're just right for that role. And uh, you just have to be there long enough for you to be right for that role. And that's hard. That's really hard. And it's hard not to take it personally. Um but if you're committed to that vision and you constantly put yourself out there and uh, stay strong, you you know, I think your your chances go up exponentially. Keep up with all future shows on my social media. I'm on Twitter as Lori's Outtakes. On Facebook, it's Outtakes Interviews on Blog Talk Radio. And on Instagram, it's Outtakes Interviews. Until next time. <laughs>